and welcome back to the last chapter of Genesis, Genesis chapter 50. I've enjoyed this reading with you through the book of Genesis. I pray that you will share it with many others. Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full forty days, for that was the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. When the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to Pharaoh's court, If I have found favor in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him, My father made me swear an oath and said, I am about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father, that I, then I will return. Joseph, even Jacob, in the seventeen years that Jacob lived in the land, his fame went out throughout all Egypt, right into the court of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was very impressed because this family was not out to get what they could for themselves. They served God. Their lives had been changed over the years. They became servants, humble, doing their duty, doing what was expected of them. And the whole land of Egypt respected them and loved them. Historically, it appears that even the pharaohs were becoming converted to a single God. This is most interesting. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court, and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. Do you want somebody to love you when you die? Do you want people to look back upon you fondly in your life? Then serve. Stop demanding. Stop the finger pointing. Stop the griping and complaining. Stop the criticizing. Change your life. The more you love, the more you will be loved. When they reached the threshing floor of Atad, near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly, and there Joseph observed a seven-day period of mourning for his father. When the Canaanites who lived there saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, The Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony of mourning. That is why that place near the Jordan is called Abel Mizram. So Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre, which Abraham had bought as a burial place from Ephraim, the Hittite, along with the field. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? That's a worldly concept, isn't it? Are those people going to hurt me? Are they going to pay me back? Well, first of all, if you don't do anything to hurt anyone, they have nothing to pay you back for in that sense. Understand? So watch yourself and make sure that nothing comes out of your mouth that your actions do nothing to hurt anyone else. Only do good. So they sent word to Joseph saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. Joseph could not believe that they would think that he would even hold any animosity. He told them it was because of God's will. He accepted that. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? 
You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived a hundred and ten years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. Also the children of Maker, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110, and after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. Let us always keep our eye on heaven. Don't let this world get into you. Keep reading, keep studying. Over and over again, I've read through this book cover to cover about 80 times or more. We just need to keep going through it to keep our hearts in tune with God. There's too much out here in this world. Advertising, television, billboards, just the people we associate with. Cell phones, communications, folks. There's so much to take us away from God. By beholding, we become changed. Let us sit in the presence of God for hours a day, beholding Him, so that we can be prepared to do our duty in this world. Thank you for being with me.